how to solve the problem of the genome sequencing just by walking on the bridges of a medieval city. This story begins here, in the ancient city of Königsberg, the capital of Eastern German Duchy of Russia. The Pregel River divided the city into four parts, the north and the south banks, the Nightcap Island behind me and along the island. Historically, these four parts were four distinct settlements, but later they merged into a single city. To connect them together, in 14th century, the people of Königsberg built seven bridges across the river. They were called Blacksmith Bridge, Connecting Bridge, Green Bridge, Merchant's Bridge, Wooden Bridge, High Bridge and Honey Bridge. While walking on the bridges, the citizens created a game, their goal being to devise a way in which they could walk the city, crossing each of the seven bridges once and only once. We will probably never know who was the first to formulate this problem, but the problem itself has become very famous within the city and beyond. For decades, the citizens of Königsberg were trying to solve it, both in theory and in practice, but all in vain. No one could find a solution or prove that it does not exist. Until in 1735, the famous mathematician Leonard Euler has built the theoretical framework of the problem and proved that it has no solution. The Academy of Science in Art in St. Petersburg, Russia. Here, in 1735, Euler presented his solution of Königsberg puzzle. In his letter written the same year to Giovanni Marioni, an Italian mathematician and engineer, Euler said, This question is so banal, but seemed to me worthy of attention, in that geometry, no algebra, no even the art of counting, was sufficient to solve it. In view of this, it occurred to me to wonder whether it belonged to the geometry of position, which Leibniz has once so much longed for. Leonard Euler suggested a theoretical approach. He eliminated all unnecessary physical parameters, such as the shapes of islands, distances between the bridges and so on. He suggested a simplified map of Königsberg. In his picture, he simplifies land masses to just dots and connected them with the lines representing the seven bridges. The resulting structure is called a graph. The initial problem is now formulated in abstract terms. One needs to find a path going through each of the graph's edges. Euler suggested the algorithm to find the solution of the problem. He counted the number of lines touching each vertex and named it the degree of the vertex. Now, the problem had the solution only if the graph has exactly zero or two vertices of odd degree. In the case of Königsberg problem, the graph has four vertices of odd degree, which means there is no path that would walk the city crossing each bridge once and only once. Euler presented a full description of his solution in a paper called The Solution of the Problem Related to the Geometry of Position, published in the Journal of the Academy of Science and Arts. The historical building of the Academy is now the oldest museum in Russia, it still has in its collection the earliest notable paper, in which he has not only solved one particular problem, but sparked a whole new branch of mathematics, the graph theory. After the original Euler's description that has solved the Königsberg problem, the graph theory was forgotten for more than 100 years. The practical significance of it has gone unnoticed, and Euler abandoned his work on the graph theory. 100 years later, the Irish mathematician William Hamilton brought the graph theory back to life. He invented so-called Ecosian game. The game's object is finding a path going through each vertex of the graph. Another 100 years after that, the Dutch mathematician Nicolas de Bruyne continued the development of the graph theory and suggested a new type of graph that was named after him. Yet another 100 years has passed 
And now, graph theory turned out to have many additional applications. The ideas of Euler, Hamilton and De Bruyne were adopted to sequence the genome. The idea to use graph theory for sequencing DNA was suggested by Pavel Pevsner, the professor at the University of California. Now he is the head of algorithmic biology research group here in St. Petersburg. ДНК есть в каждом живом организме, и это длинные молекулы или несколько молекул, которые кодируют все свойства организма. ДНК очень длинная молекула, он состоит всего из четырех типов нуклеотидов. Аденин, цитозин, гуанин и тимин. И в зависимости от того, в какой последовательности они идут в ДНК, это определяет свойства организма, то есть почему у разных людей разный цвет глаз и так далее. У вас где-то стоит буковка А, а у меня на этом месте стоит буковка Г, поэтому, например, у нас разный цвет глаз. In the organism, DNA is organized in the chromosomes, twisted and hidden in the nucleus of every cell. But in terms of bioinformatics, DNA is just a long sequence of just four symbols. The main goal is to decode or to read that sequence. Современные технологии позволяют читать только небольшие кусочки ДНК. В зависимости от технологии, это будут кусочки длины от сотни до десятков тысяч. Кусочки читаются из случайных мест, читаются с ошибками, и поэтому, когда вы открываете файл, вы просто видите какой-то, ну, грубо говоря, набор мусора. These fragments are called reads. After analyzing several copies of a single genome, scientists receive a huge number of reads that may repeat and overlap with each other. So the objective is quite complicated to compile the initial sequence out of a huge number of details. Долгое время люди использовали очень простой подход. Мы возьмем один кусочек, посмотрим, какой кусочек с ним перекрывается, склеим их, возьмем третий кусочек, посмотрим, кто с ними перекрывается и так далее, и так далее. Но на самом деле она очень вычислительно сложная и требует огромных мощностей компьютерных. To solve this problem, they suggested a whole another paradigm to sequence the DNA, to use graph theory. Let's have a look at the circular DNA. That is a usual type of DNA for bacteria. With one of the reading techniques, or more scientifically sequencing, we obtain small fragments, reads. These reads are received from random parts of the genome. The same way, we read a certain number of copies of the DNA. As a result, we have a set of overlapping and repeating reads. The goal is to assemble the whole genome out of that set. To do that, each read is presented as a graph edge between two vertices. For example, GTG read is represented as an edge between GT vertex and TG vertex. The similar way, each vertex becomes an edge. After that, we join the repeating vertices together and get the resulting graph. Такой граф в математике называется графом де Брюйна, назван в честь голландского математика Николаса де Брюйна. Вот. Когда мы построили этот граф, чтобы найти исходный геном, нам найти нужны Эйлера в путь, о котором мы говорили раньше. Да, поскольку граф имеет определенную структуру, что у нас соседние вершинки соединенные ребром перекрываются, делая каждый новый шаг, мы добавляем по одной букве. Ну и если мы знаем правильный Эйлер в путь, мы можем идти по графу и прыгать. На каждую новую вершинку мы добавляем по одной букве. И так, пройдя по всему графу, найдя этот эллеров путь, мы составим весь геном. Действительно такая, казалось бы, абстрактная идея и абстрактная структура данных, как граф, разработанная много-много лет назад, сейчас находится новые и новые применения, вот в том числе и в биоформатике, в задаче сборки генома, на самом деле во многих других задачах. И конкретно граф де Брюйна и кое-где поиск Эйлера пути, что там, не знаю, сотню лет назад казалось просто чем-то вроде забавы для математиков, сейчас находит э, реальное применение. Ну и на самом деле, мне кажется, это не единственный пример, когда что-то, придуманное математиками, не нашедшее э, отражение в реальной жизни и не на... то, что не нашло применение, э, через много десятков или сотен лет даже находят применение в чем-то очень важном и совершенно далеком от математики. The city of Königsberg has greatly changed since Euler's time. Those bridges are not here anymore. Some of them were destroyed by British bombings in 1944. Some of them were replaced by new highways. But the famous problem of seven bridges of Königsberg went down in the history of mathematics.